Mr. Galilei? My name is Fulgancio. I'm a student of physics. For three nights, I have been unable to sleep. I can't reconcile the decree of the Holy Office, which I've read, with the satellites of Jupiter, which I've seen. So this morning, I decided to perform mass and then come to see you. To tell me Jupiter has no moons. No. The decree has shocked me into realizing that unrestricted research is dangerous. I've decided to give up astronomy. But first I felt I had to tell you my reasons. Such reasons are familiar to me. You mean, of course, certain pressures exerted by the church. But there is something else. I'd like to talk to you about my family. I don't come from the great city. My parents are peasants in the Campania. They know about growing olives, but not much about anything else. Often these days, as I observe the phases of Venus, I can see my mother and father and sister sitting by the stove at home, under rafters blackened by the smoke of centuries. I can see the spoons in their roughened hands. They're very poor. But underlying their poverty, there is a sort of order, routine, rhythm. My father's back wasn't bowed all at once, but little by little each year. Regularly, year after year, childbearing made my mother more and more sexless. What gives them the strength to sweat with loaded baskets up the stony paths, to bear children, even to eat, is the sense of stability, of necessity, which they get from the sight of the trees turning green every year, from the sight of the soil and the little church. They've been told the eye of God is on them and that the whole pageant of the world was written around them that they might be saved. Well, what would they say if I told them that they're living on a little chunk of stone spinning in empty space around a second-rate star? What would be the use of their patience, then, of their acquiescence in their misery? What comfort would there be in Holy Scripture which demonstrates the necessity of their submission and their sweat if Holy Scripture is shown to be full of error? No, they'd feel they'd been cheated. I can see their eyes waver. I can see them put down their spoons on the table. Hunger is just going without food, not a test of strength, they'd say. Effort is just bending and carrying, not a virtue. So can you wonder if I see in the decree of the Holy Office a noble and motherly compassion, a great magnanimity? Hmm. Well... At least you found out that the crux of the matter is not the satellites of Jupiter, but the peasants of the Campania. And don't talk to me about the beauty that radiates from suffering. Do you know how a pearl develops in an oyster? A jagged grain of sand gets inside the oyster shell and makes its life unbearable. The oyster exudes slime to cover the grain of sand, and that eventually hardens into a pearl. The oyster nearly dies in the process. To hell with a pearl, give me the healthy oyster. Virtues are not the monopoly of poverty. If your parents were prosperous and happy, they could develop the virtues of happiness and prosperity. Do you want me to lie to your people?
We must be silent from the highest of motives. The inward peace of less fortunate souls. If I condoned this decree and left your parents undisturbed, my motives might not be entirely disinterested. Easy life, no persecution, and so on. Would you like to see a Cellini timepiece that Cardinal Bellamin's coachman delivered here this morning? And as a reward for leaving your mother and father's peace untroubled, the government offers me the wine they produce by the sweat of their brow. The brow which, as you know, was made in God's image. Mr. Galilei, I am a priest. You're also a physicist. And you can see that Venus has phases. How can new machinery be evolved to control rivers if physicists are forbidden to study the greatest machinery of all, the mechanism of the stars? Can I reconcile my findings on the pads of falling bodies with the tracks of witches riding on broomsticks? You don't think that truth, if it is truth, would make its way without us? No. Truth prevails only as far as we make it prevail. You speak about the Campania peasants as if there were moss on their huts. If they don't rouse themselves and learn to think, the best irrigation systems in the world can't help them. I can see their divine patience, but where is their divine wrath? They're tired. Are you a physicist? Here is what draws the ocean when it ebbs and flows. Let it lie there. Thou shalt not read. Already. You are a physicist. An apple of the tree of knowledge. He can't wait. He will sit down. He'll rot in hell for all eternity, and yet look at him. Where are his manners? Sometimes I think I would willingly be imprisoned in a dungeon fathoms under the earth if in exchange I could find out one thing. What is light? And the worst of it is, when I find something out, I have to tell others about it. Like a lover. Like a drunkard. Like a traitor. I don't understand this sentence. I'll explain it to you, Fulgandio. I'll explain it to you.